Welcome to the New Air 2024 Floor Plan Model 3539. And we're going to take you on a walkthrough so you can understand the features and the functions of how it operates. So if you come up here to the front of the coach, the touchpad for the leveling. The leveling is what you want to do when you park your coach. The way to turn this touchpad on is to activate the start-stop key switch and that will give the touchpad power to operate. So once you see the travel mode come on, you will make sure that uh, your, if you're going to level, you want to make sure to run your slide rooms out first and then level second. So our slide rooms, um, we've run out and we run, run those slide rooms out while we are on our air. So make sure the coach is aired up, run the slide rooms out, and then we level. So you can see here, we're now in the travel mode. And to level, we can do it in two separate ways. The easiest way to level the coach is go into the auto level here. So you press the auto level button. You'll, you'll hear the air um, going out of the airbags. Coach will slightly drop down, and then you'll be able to hear the jacks extending towards the ground, and then that will level the coach. It takes a couple of minutes to go through the process. You can hear the pump start it up, and as the jacks go down, you'll notice the red LED light comes on, and that's indicating that that jack over in this corner is going down. Now you see the other one in the rear, that one's going down, and all of the jacks will go down touch the ground and continue to level the coach. Once it's level, um, you'll see all the red lights are on, indicating that all the jacks are deploying or, or started to deploy. You can hear the uh, warning for the jacks uh, as long as uh, you leave the touchpad on, you'll hear that warning, and that warning is telling you uh, that you don't want to move the coach. So once the coach is level, um, you'll notice uh, that uh, none of the other lights are on, and the jacks are no longer deploying because the pump is off, so we have leveled the coach. So now we can turn the key off and then our warning light goes off. You can do the reverse of that to retract. So we would just turn our key back on. And if you hit auto store, then you see that LED light is flashing for the auto store. Now all of our jacks will come up and retract. When each jack is fully retracted, the red light will go out for that, for that jack. So these are now retracted and the rear ones will follow. And once we are fully retracted on all the jacks, the red lights are out, then we can turn off the key here. So you can see now we are back in travel mode. So we're, we're now in travel mode. Uh, we are finished auto storing. And it's time to air the coach up. So we, why do we want to air the coach up now is because before we run the slide rooms back in or um, retract the slide rooms, we want to have the airbags fully um, inflated and then we run the slide rooms in and then we'll be uh, ready to travel. So to do that, we just press the brake, press the key a second time coach starts 
and now the coach is airing up. You can see here on the dash, we've got the front and rear labeled F and R in the center. And as the engine runs, the compressor in the engine uh, will uh, air up the airbags in the front and the rear. And you can see the orange needle uh, traveling over to the right on both. And once it's aired up, uh, then of course you would run or retract your slide rooms in, and then you'd be able to uh, drive your coach. So we'll wait a second, and both of these orange needles should be the same on the front and rear. To get a better view of that, I can press my foot on this pedal down here in the corner, and I can move the steering wheel down a little bit so you can have a better view. This, of course, is a glass dash, and all the gauges, uh, starting from the left to the right here, you've got your fuel, your engine temperature, engine oil pressure, and then, of course, we're looking at our air bags in the front and the rear, and our DEF. This, of course, is our tachometer. Uh, speedometer and this is our home screen in the center here and we'll talk a little bit more about that but to view the different uh, settings in the home screen that's all done right here on the right side of the wheel you can see now the both of the needles for the air uh, have stopped moving and our coach is fully aired up so now we would be able to run the slide rooms in and uh, be able to travel with the coach. So we'll turn the coach off. And we'll come back over here and we'll move forward to the next uh, control. Uh, when our coach is aired up and we're ready to travel, all the slide rooms are in and, and any satellite or other uh, awnings have been retracted, then we'll be able to uh, release the parking brake by pushing it in. Once we push that in, then we come over here and we can select either drive or reverse. Uh, obviously the center is neutral. You wanna leave the coach in neutral when you come to park, uh, put it in neutral and then pull out on the parking brake um, whenever you come to a stop. So. D is drive. Uh, you'll automatically see uh, the gear that you're in displayed here. And um, you'll be able to select different modes and see in the small window here, LED window, uh, what uh, gear or if there are any uh, codes that you need to um, look at as far as uh, temperature and uh, levels of uh, oil. Just in front of your gear pad for your engine and transmission, you've got your mirror, the mirrors left and right. Uh, so when you're adjusting the left mirror on the driver's side, you can go left, right, up and down. Uh, in the center is neither mirror, so you can touch it and nothing will happen to either mirror. To the right then is adjusting the mirror on the passenger side up and down left and right just to the left of that is the mirror heat so if we turn that on and it, it illuminates red that means the heater is on the mirror and of course that will melt any moisture or frost off the mirror and that will give you better visibility um, you don't need that on a nice day or when there's no moisture on it you can leave it off Again, leave this selector left and right in the center. Uh, if, you, if you've made your adjustments, leave it in the center. That way, if you touch it by accident, it won't move the mirror. Just in the front of that, you've got your window for the driver window here. And then you've got your um, ATC um, override here. And you've got your engine brake here. So 
if you are if you're using or wanting to use your engine brake this is the switch to turn it on and this is to turn it off um, the ATC override is on just momentary here you can see it the, it the light comes on here and then hit it again and it goes off you get your cup holders here just in front of that you've got your um, bright and dim for your headlights so if we turn those on uh, we can control the dim or brightness of all the switches here we've got our house battery boost right here uh, what this switch will do is if your batteries are a little bit low either on the house or on the chassis side you can use the other bank to help boost um, those house batteries or you can use the house batteries to boost the chassis just by pressing down or up and that's something you will want to use if the coach won't start obviously you want to boost hold that down for 60 seconds uh, that connects the charge bridge solenoid so both battery banks engage and then you'll be able to uh, start your coach now obviously if the batteries on one or, or both of these are too low you'll have to charge those both banks of batteries but in most cases you'll be able to uh, uh, toggle this towards the side that you want to boost and you'll be able to um, engage uh, the other set of batteries so you can continue on you've got your dome light here uh, this is the um, high beams um, auto so um, you can turn this on and then instead of having to turn your high beams um, to bright or dim this automatically will uh, dim them when oncoming traffic is uh, close by uh, this panel here is the charger for your phone so you can just lay your phone here and it will charge uh, this is of course for your parking lights uh, this is for your um, headlights on and off and this one is for your fog lights we talked a little bit about this this is our parking brake we want to make sure to pull this it applies the air brakes uh, for the chassis um, and then when we want to travel then we push it forward to travel pull to engage just to the right of that, you've got your louvers uh, for air. And then we talked a little bit about the glass dash over here. And uh, we'll go into a little more detail now. Um, so looking at the center is where you'd want to go to your home screen. So you can uh, scroll up and down as if I scroll this arrow up you can see I'm moving to a different uh, selection so here I've got my brightness I've got my messages I've got my settings here and anytime that I, I choose the one of those then I can press the OK button and then that takes me to the next window because I've selected uh, that setting so now uh, that I've selected settings I can scroll up and down to units sound TP, uh, TPMS tire pressure monitoring uh, and once I've selected that for instance if I select units I can press OK and now I can select which unit I want to change or adjust uh, speed and distance for instance I could select that by pressing OK again right now it's set to kilometers so since I'm in the US I would want to select miles so I go up here to miles and press OK so then now I've selected uh, this speedometer to read out in miles per hour so that's basically how you do it you uh, you make your you scroll up and down after you select house and 
you choose, uh, let's say for information, for instance, press OK. And then now I can scroll up and down and I can view transmission temp, engine torque, exhaust temp, and different things in any one of these categories. So just make your selection, press OK, and then once you're in the window, you can go up and down to select and make changes. Um, you can see there's another window just below that. Um, that is uh, uh, for your um, lane mitigation and uh, braking. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, when we go outside. Okay, we showed you a little bit earlier, there's a small pedal here on the left. And what that is, is our, it's our adjustment pedal for the wheel telescoping and tilt. So if I press that down, now I can tilt the wheel. I can also pull it or telescope it in or out and make the adjustments I want, uh, you know, for uh, while I'm driving or if I just want to completely push it forward to get out of the way, then I just release and now it's locked into place. So press down, unlocks it, release, and that locks the wheel back in place. So coming over here to the, uh, just to the right side of the glass dash, um, you'll see two screens here, and this is our camera viewing and control. So this is integrated into an Excite core, a radio core, and those adjustments for the radio can be made here in the center uh, for your volume and source uh, for tuning your radio and volume up and down. In addition to that, um, you can adjust your lights and you can uh, intermittently turn them on or off here, or you can X out the volume completely here. Um, the other control on the wheel of obviously is the horn. Here, on the left side here, we've got our wiper, wash, and off. Um, we also have our uh, telephone, if we want to make a phone call, we can press the green button. Hang up is the red. Just a quick note on making the telephone call. You'll have to have your telephone Bluetooth to the radio core, the Excite core, in order for this function to work. There's the high-low adjustment for your wipers here. If you press it once, it'll go high. Press it again, it goes low and intermittent, however we adjust the intermittent delay, in other words, if I turn it on intermittent and I press the intermittent button again, there's that amount of delay. So if I wait 10 seconds and press it again, then it's going to delay 10 seconds. If I wait only five seconds, then you're gonna have a shorter five second delay. So as you press it a second time, that sets the amount of delay. So just to the uh, left side of our left instrument cluster on the wheel, there's a, obviously our turn signal uh, displayed on the dash left and right. And whenever you make that selection or turn, the camera will display on that side of the coach. So this is our left turn displaying the left camera towards the rear. And we go right and the right camera comes on and shows what's um, behind the coach on the right side. There's also the cruise control button here. So I can set my cruise here, turn it on and off, and then I would press the set button here in the center and that will set my cruise. There is another control just to the inside back of that. If I pull the chrome steel handle out my emergency flashers come on, front and rear coach. If I wanna turn them off, just hit the turn signal either way and that turns the emergency flashers off. So moving over here to the camera controls, you can see there's a menu here. Um, I can select the menu, the main menu, and that gives me these options, radio, media center, 
Sirius XM, Bluetooth, HDMI, these are course plugs, camera control, which that's the one we were just viewing, iPod navigation, this is one you'll use a lot. You have to accept, and then you'll be able to go to the navigation screen. Mobile Eye. Now the Mobile Eye is integrated into the dash, as you can see here, uh, and this is to help you um, so that you know if you're in your lane or if you're making a lane change, it'll indicate it with the Mobile Eye. We'll show you the Mobile Eye a little bit later, but what it is, it's mounted in the center of the front windshield, and that uh, monitors uh, your movement and movement in front of you and then it displays it here on the screen. It also gives you warning about, about vehicles and it gives you uh, feedback. If you move out of either side of your lane, you'll notice or you'll feel a haptic feedback in your uh, driver's seat. And then of course you have your, the last screen is your setup screen um, and you can go through uh, this, uh, there's two pages. Um, let's say that you wanted to update your navigation, for instance. Uh, that's done in your Wi-Fi settings. Um, uh, so you can see it's scanning here now. But if you go to your operator's manual, you'll be able to review each one of these settings and then you'll be able to use those. For instance, if I wanted to Bluetooth my phone, I would touch the Bluetooth, go here to where you see the phone icon, press my phone icon, and it looks like the last person to have connected to this uh, radio core via the Bluetooth was Adam, uh, and he was the one that helped set this core up. So. If we move to the navigation, this is the shortcut for the navigation screen because it's used a lot. So that's our navigation screen. Um, you can go to the menu here and select a route, multi-point, new route, traffic, or useful information. Um, we have uh, our settings here and about. Um, back here is the shortcut to the camera. And we have our favorites button here. Uh, and that one hasn't been set up yet. To turn the screen off or the volume up and down, you can do that right here. You can just press it and hold it for a second and that will turn the screen off. And this is the screen you'll see, it's called the Numar splash screen. And that means that it's turned off. To turn it back on, same way, just press and hold for a second. Screen comes on. If you have to make sure and press it firmly to make it come on. There's also a power button for the screen on the right. It's a separate power button for that screen. Uh, this one turns this screen on and off. This one turns the right-hand screen off. So turn that one back on. I can go into settings here. I can look at my dimming here. I can dim. I can go use the up and down arrows here for dimming or brightness, contrast, color. Um, one, one thing that we uh, didn't mention over here, there's a, a small button here. Um, that's for your um, volume for your Bluetooth. So if you want to make the connection on your phone to the Bluetooth so you can make telephone calls or listen to music that you have on your phone, um, you can go to the menu here hit the Bluetooth, and then it will tell you what to search for here. So you can see here, 
Uh, on my Bluetooth menu, I can see the 529, so I select that. And then I hit Allow. It's connecting now to my iPhone 2. And it should show that connected up here. And right there it is, connected. So I'm now connected to uh, the, the radio core here. So I could use my phone to play music or make phone calls. Um, and I can do that now that I'm connected through the phone. I can do that up here on the steering wheel if I'd like. So that's how you connect to the Bluetooth. And then you can make your selections um, for music or phone, whatever you like. So there's a gear icon here. It, once you're ready to uh, do your setup, uh, go there. But this makes it pretty simple once you press menu. You'll be able to, you'll see here that in the menu selection, you've got navigation and camera. You've got here, if I touch menu, you can see that I've got navigation and I've got camera here and here. So, but these two you can get to from the menu, but just as a shortcut, they set them up here on the left side of the screen because they're used a lot. Uh, we're in the camera control screen now and again you can get there just by pressing cam here or if you're in the main menu you can press camera control gets you to the same place once we're in this camera screen you can select front uh, front near the mirror going back or the side camera looking out from the side of the coach um, or the 360 degree view here or any one of these and um, you can select uh, the, the same on either side just press it and that selects that camera when we're done with that camera view then we can go back to menu or just back to nav and again you have to select accept to go into the navigation screen let's move on to the dash controls here uh, these are the visor and shade controls uh, on the first three. You can hear the shade moving on my left. These are, uh, and the shade here on the front, you can see that moving up and down. And the reason it only goes up, uh, despite going up and down, is because I have the key on. So anytime you have the ignition turned on, there's a safety that's built into that shade motor, which says uh, may have the engine on and may need to drive. So it's always going to go up and not down. So um, if I want the shade to go down, I need to turn the ignition off. Now I'll be able to operate the shade back down. That's just for safety. Um, both of the front shades are like that so that you don't lose view while you're um, driving. There's docking lights. Of course, those we can't see, but we can tell the docking lights are being able to turn on and off here by the indicator light. There's overhead fans. Uh, the overhead fans, we have to have our ignition on. So you can hear the fans in the overhead uh, above near the top of the windshield come on and off. I can go from low to medium or high. That moves the air uh, in the front part of the windshield for defrosting. I can turn them off or leave them on, just turn it to a lower setting. Just to the right of that, there's another fan switch. That fan switch is for a heater um, and my ITR Oasis hydronic furnace uh, that heats the entire coach has to be turned on first. But after that, and I can use this switch to turn on the fan that's mounted in the base here where you see those louvers. So if I turn my ITR Oasis on, let it heat up, I'll be able to turn this on to uh, low or high in the center is off and I'll be able to feel heat coming out right here by my feet. So that, that's to heat the, the cockpit area here while I'm driving. 
um, or the living room area if I need more heat. This is obviously generator start. If I hold the generator start button down, you can see the it flashes. That means that the um, it's preheating and priming, and that's a diesel um, generator that's mounted up front here. You can hear it just kicked on. Um, so that's how we turn our generator on so we can have power in the house in case we're our shore cord is not plugged in we can still operate things uh, when we're done running the generator just press the stop and it will turn off the generator can automatically start if you enable your AGS or your automatic gen start and we'll talk more about that later here's your entrance lock for your entrance door lock and unlock. The air horn we showed earlier, if we turn the air horn up, then we press uh, the horn, then the air horn works. If it's down, then just the street horn works. These are the courtesy lights um, for the interior on and off. And of course, this is our visor control for our shade. Just below that, we have our fan switch. You can hear the fan going to high and low or off. This is for heat or cool. So if we're going to have, we need warmer temperatures, we wanna rotate that to the red or clockwise. All the way to the right is the warmest or hottest setting. In the middle um, is uh, just, it's a nice temperature set for uh, a climate. This little LED button for recirculate, you can see that come on. It's an amber LED light. Um, that keeps the air in the cockpit recirculating. And there's an additional one here. So if our key is engaged, we'll be able to see a blue LED light. And that means that the air conditioning is turned on for cooling ability. So our compressor for the air conditioner is on. If I press it again, then it's off. So if I want cool air and I have a setting to cold on hot days, I got to make sure that I see that little blue LED light come on. And ideally for faster cool, you want to press the recirculate fan to keep the cool air in and cool down faster. Then over on the right is your controls for where you want the air to come out. Uh, defrost, defrost and floor, floor only, uh, mid and floor and then just mid only. And you can feel the air come out once I make those selections. And of course, zero is off. Just below that, we've got our drawers. Our, for our, um, we can put our keys in here. We want to make sure to have the key fob within about three feet of this on off switch. If this key fob is you know, four, five, six feet further, um, you won't be able to start the engine. So um, make sure to leave this in the coach um, so that you, you can start the coach. If, you, if this goes away or back into the coach or away from the coach, um, you won't be able to start. This, of course, has baggage door locks um, and it has uh, the locks here for the door. You can hear the door lock and unlock and our baggage doors lock and unlock. In addition to that, the keys here will unlock those same doors manually. Another drawer here. And then moving over, um, well, actually looking at the top of the dash, you'll notice there are two panels here. Those are Velcro panel in. And if you need access behind the dash on either one of these, if you lift up on the panel, you'll hear the Velcro release and you'll be able to see under the dash. Um, the first thing you see here is the radio core. The radio core obviously is for the Excite radio. Um, if we go to that, we'll be able to tune our FM AM signals. So that's the radio core and there's other items below that. Uh, when we're done with that, we can just put this back 
match up the Velcro and just press and that replaces either one of these panels. Over on the right there is uh, additional louvers. Uh, the one louver um, will always blow air out, uh, even if we haven't selected the midsection here, uh, and that's just to keep that window defrosted. Just to the left side and above the driver's seat, we have extra storage in these two doors here, storage up here. And then right above the driver's steering wheel, we have our AV cabinet. The auto, audio visual cabinet is where you see your satellite prep here and your power over ethernet. So this is where you would install your satellite receiver. Um, it is also where you will find your Wi-Fi Ranger connection. Uh, this is your receiver here, um, your router, and your password information is on the top of it. Um, this information is included in your owner's operator's manual, um, but this is where your router is. And then your antenna for the router is on top of the roof. So this is the cabinet where you will plug in uh, your 120 volt and receiver for satellite. Uh, just to the right of our connection for the extra uh, reset is our video connection switch, turning that on and off for the MyRosie function. In this cabinet, we have our controls for the Girard awnings. Uh, the Girard awnings have LED light switch controls and channel controls, and they have in, stop, and out. So we can control the uh, patio awning right here with this control panel. You can see here uh, it's mounted um, on this magnetic switch. Uh, we won't operate that because we can't see outside right now. If you're going to operate this, there is another remote control. If you're going to operate it, uh, it'd be good to be standing on the outside. Just to the right of that is our WineGuard television over-the-air receiver. When this is turned on, then the cable, if you're plugged in the park cable, is disabled. So. If you want to watch park cable, then you leave this off. But if you want to tune in channels from the outside over the air to your television, this needs to be turned on. Once it's turned on, you can go into a search. It will search and find the channels for you. You can make adjustments uh, to rotating that. Uh, receiver a little bit. It's on the roof uh, to the right or to the left here. We're inside of a building now so the scanning will just continue to scan. It's not going to find any channels because uh, we're not outside where it can actually receive signal. So we'll just turn that off and we'll go over the, uh, how to use this with the television a little bit later. Um, there's an illuminated blue BMS battery power button here. This is how you turn on your lithium BMS, battery management system. In other words, when we turn this off, we would lose power to our house here inside the coach. So it's similar to a battery disconnect. Uh, by pressing it, um, we would lose the lighting in the coach here and our batteries for the house would be disconnected. Now these are not the batteries for the engine starting, they're for the house only. So if this illuminated on-off switch would happen to go out or be off, you can press it to turn it back on, but it typically goes off or shuts off automatically at the 10% level of battery state of charge. So if this goes out, that means that you're at the 10% level. And if you turn it back on, 
That's okay, but you have to remember you've only got 10% of your battery charge left and you wanna make sure that you're gonna charge those batteries by either turning the generator on or plugging your coach in because you've only got 10% left. Um, in the event that it would drop down, you know, to that just couple percentage left, then this would go out and you'd be out of power. So just remember, this will stay illuminated uh, and it's on. You can turn it off manually, but if you come in and it has shut off by itself, you've only got 10% charge left in the batteries. We'll show you where the BMS is. There's another switch just like this on the side of the BMS that indicates the exact same thing that you see here. It looks the same and does the same thing. Just to the uh, center on the left here, you've got a switch that you could install. It's for your optional satellite connection. If you want to do that here, there's miscellaneous equipment labeled Wi-Fi router, the one that we saw up there. You can turn that on and off here. The exterior entrance step overrides. So you can turn that on and off here. If you turn the switch, the, en the exterior entry step switch on, it overrides the door magnetic switch. In other words, if my door closes, my steps come in or retract. If I open the entrance door, my steps go out. But if I want to leave the steps out all the time, whether the door is open or closed, then I would press this and that overrides whether I have the door open or closed, the steps will always stay out. My exterior LED switch is here. Um, you'll note a note here, be sure driver's seat is in the forward position before activating slide out room. So just remember the driver's seat and the passenger seat need to be forward away from the slide room uh, front before you uh, move the slide in either direction because you don't want to hit your driver or passenger seat. So if I'm moving the slide in or out or the passenger slide in or out, extend or retract, I want to make sure that my driver's and passenger seats are moved forward because if they're not, what will happen is slide will come and press against the side of the seat and it will bend the seat uh, one way or the other. Uh, at the bottom row here, we've got our door awning. Uh, this is just the awning right above the entrance door. Um, there is a light that is a uh, strip light on that awning. We can turn that strip light on and off or we can move the door awning in and out. We have our privacy drapes, driver, uh, front drape, door drape, and passenger drape here. We have our driver's security lights that will illuminate and press it again, it will go out. Same with our security lights. It just takes a second for it to uh, dissipate. There is an additional uh, plug here. This is a service port. Uh, you won't need to do anything with this. This is for the service technician at the dealership um, or Numar. This is where the CAN bus network is uh, set up and monitored and or adjusted here. And that is with the Omniscope and Silverleaf uh, control. Just to the right of that, we have uh, one more control in this cabinet. This is just your solar panel charge control. There's an on off button here. I can turn the solar panel charger on and off. And then I can scroll through the settings here and also view the voltages. You can see here there is a moon shape right above the solar panel, which means we're in a building and obviously it's not charging right now. So just above the entrance door, we have um, the 110 and 120 volt plugs, uh, 15 amp recept. And this one is for your awning controls. The awning controls are just over here 
underneath this door, but they plug in here. So this is our manual control for both of our Girard awnings. Uh, we can see that they're illuminated, so they're receiving power, so our remotes would work. Or we can operate them manually. If you look here on the right side, there's extend and retract, and then the middle would be stop right here on both of these. You can operate them manually. So if you lose your remote, no worries. You've got your control here manually. You can retract or extend your awnings. So just coming down here to the wall uh, panel, control for our lighting. Um, all of our lighting can be tr controlled here with this one uh, panel. Um, if you don't understand how to use this control, you can just go to the home screen and then you can see here all of the lighting shades, fans, and systems. You can then press the I button and that's your information button. So then you can learn how to control your lighting. It explains it here. So for any one of the uh, functions, uh, whether it's lighting or any of the others, pressing the I and then selecting uh, which one you need information on, it will go through. Now we've highlighted the bathroom lights here. Red color indicates active selection. So whenever you press, uh, um, that button it goes and turns red that means it's active and it's on or off gray color indicates non-active uh, toggle all lights on toggle all lights off so you you can toggle and but only this is a, the operating instructions so here nothing is going to happen it's just explaining how it works i scrolled over um, op, for more operating instructions you can see here turns on light here turns off light here so you can slide this up and down again there's no control here it's just explaining how it works so to go back back to our home screen uh, and we just learned that sliding this light control will dim or brighten or turn off all the way or turn back on so that's how your lighting and panel control works throughout the coach Anytime that you have a question on not being certain how that control works, you can press the I button, and then let's say you don't understand the fans, then you press the fans, and this will explain how that works. For more or additional information, just scroll to the right, and you'll have more instructions. And the home, the home screen always goes back to the main screen, the home screen. So going down just below that, we have another... Uh, 120 volt outlet here. Um, forward of that, we have a phone charger here. We have our uh, buddy panel uh, for our nav and radio. Uh, this just mirrors what you see on the, the larger screen here at the driver's side. We have our ceiling light switch when we come in. So when you immediately enter the coach, you can turn that on and off here. We have our step cover. Uh, what's the step cover? The step cover where I'm standing uh, is a cover so that if you want these steps uh, to be out, um, out of the way so you could have a floor here, if you press and hold that down, that step cover is gonna extend and then it's going to extend and then come up so that it's even with the rest of your floor. So you can stand here just like uh, having a floor that extends all the way over to the entrance door. Um, when you're done using that step cover, you can retract it, just press it, and it goes back down and out of the way. Just to the side of that is our visor, uh, visor control. You can hear the visor here going up and down. And then, of course, we have, just above us, we have the map light. So that can turn it off, on and off. And below that, we have an additional uh, plug here with USB and USB-C for charging. And just on the front side of the armrest here, you've got your battery disconnect. So this 
will disconnect the house batteries uh, from the coach. And if we press that, this red light will go out and uh, there won't be any power in the house here. We also have a patio light and we have a lock and unlock switch here for our baggage doors. You can hear that. And we'll cover the uh, door latch and lock uh, when we go to the outside. Oh, one other thing just below is our fire extinguisher here. So uh, there is a, a latch. You can just flip that down and grab a hold of your fire extinguisher and bring it out. Pull the pin and then you would use the extinguisher just by pressing and holding it down. Here at the center uh, in, near the entrance is your smoke detector or smoke alarm. Um, these can be tested just by pressing the center here. That uh, indicator for the LED tells you your battery is um, working. You'll see a flash. Um, intermittent flash that tells your batteries are powered on and he, when you hear that tone uh, that tells you that um, the smoke detector is working so in the event of an alarm that's if you press and hold that's the sound that you're going to hear if you need to change it the batteries are just flip down here and your battery is right here you can remove the battery and change it Let's talk a little bit about the seat controls here. The main forward and back is just press forward or press back. If you wanna tilt the whole base, this is how you do it. Just tilt forward and back that tilts the base. There's an extension of the footrest here. So if we press that and you'll see our footrest will come out and then retract footrest can see that's our tilt for our back, the seat back. And then this is the lumbar control. And you'll be able to feel that. And then the last control here is for the seat heat. So that's the warmest setting and that's just, that's warm and that's warmest. In the middle is off. These controls pretty much mirror the same controls that you have on the driver's seat. The only difference is you won't be able to extend this footrest if the parking brake is disengaged. So if you're traveling, uh, you won't be able to extend your footrest. Obviously, that would be a safety issue. The armrests just come down um, or up on both sides, the same. This is a tablet holder, uh, comes with your coach, uh, typically in the drawers in the kitchen area. And this just inserts into the socket here. And then you, you can turn it, but it, it's, it's kind of locked in place, but yet it's, you still can uh, turn it left or right or make adjustments up and down. Um, this adjusts to the size of your tablet and uh, the tilt is adjustable as well. And there's just a, a, a notice here, please remove the protective membrane before you use the product. Uh, what that does is that exposes the rubber material on the back and it's kind of an anti-slip so that your tablet doesn't slide too much around after you've got it in place. When you're done, you can just take this out and store it back in your cabinets or drawers. Uh, above the sofa here, we have additional storage compartments. Uh, a wall panel control. This is the same type of panel control that you have uh, in the front. It controls the same um, sets of lights. Um, you can still go to the same screen screens that we covered uh, for information or help. This folds out into a sleeper. You need to remove the cushions on the rear. The seat back are Velcroed in place. So you just grab a hold and pull. OK. 
Okay, I'll move these out of the way momentarily. And you lift and pull out. And then the seat back folds forward into a bed. And to store, store it or stow it back in place, same reverse procedure, seat back in place. Just lift, fold this down, and then fold this, and that will stow back in place. And then we just put our cushions back, match up the Velcro, and just push back. At the dinette, we have our Bose soundbar. Storage area here is actually for your AV hookups. You can see here we've labeled each one of the cables. This one is your satellite source. Um, this here is also your Blu-ray and DVD if you have that. There's a satellite cable connection there and additional 120 volt outlet plugs. Just below that, we have additional cabinet space here. And on the other side, we have more storage here above This door is removable to access the television. Uh, this is the television lift, and we'll show that in a minute. But first, we're going to show you how to extend the table. So if you grab a hold of the table and pull out, you can add two extra leaves. And they're labeled uh, with numbers, one, two, two, and three. So you would look at the bottom. And see the numbers one and two. Start with one. Open this up a little bit more, get a little more room, and put our second leaf in two and three. Now that we've extended our table, uh, in the bedroom, underneath the bed lift, are two additional chairs. So we can get those chairs out and we can set those up here in the kitchen. On both sides, uh, there's an additional chair. Now I have room for four. So when we're ready to store it away, we just take the chairs back, put them under the bed lift. Just pull back and remove our leaf. And then just push the table back in place. And we're ready for travel. There's a secondary control here uh, for the lighting. The lighting controls for that area have the lighting switch for this area, for the dinette area. The Bose sound bar and the TV have their own remotes. So 
to control the sound bar, you can use your Bose control here. Uh, and of course the television is here. So if we wanna lift the TV up, we would go over here. We would go to systems, go to TV lift. Now you can see your TV lift is going up. Once our TV lift is up, we'll be able to turn it on. And you will need to go through a scan to find local channels. So wherever you travel to, you're gonna to have to rescan your TV. Now, in order to scan, you have to have the antenna turned on, which was in the overhead here. So you'd have this turned on and you would see these lights scanning as you scan for channels. So you want to go to the home button here. And that's where we're at. And then you would want to go to find the scan, which is the gear icon here. So we go to the gear icon in settings. Now we can see if we select that. Now we can scroll over. Okay, all settings is where we want to go. Now we'll be able to set up sound connection broadcasting. So we Go to Broadcasting, now we can go to Auto Programming. And then Auto Program says press Start to search and store channels. So we press the button in the center there that will hit our scan. And we want to scan for air because we have our antenna turned on. Now we're in a building so it's not going to pick up any channels but this is how we do it. Hit, press that, and it goes through a scan. You'll have to do the same thing when you're scanning for cable. But to do that, you want to have the antenna turned off. When it's off, then you'll be able to view the cable channels. OK. Obviously, we didn't find any because we're in a building. But we'll close this. And if we wanted to scan for cable, we'd hit the auto program and we'd select yes, start scan. But this time, instead of selecting air, we'd turn off the uh, air, over the air channel receiver and then it would automatically view the cable. We press yes for cable and it would scan for our cable channels. Obviously, we're not connected to cable, so we're not going to pick up any channels. So, we'll just go ahead and stop scanning since we won't pick up any here. So, we'll close this screen out and go back. We can also make adjustments to our picture, sound, or connections. We have our fireplace here. Uh, you can control it manually here with the touch panel screen or with the remote. So the on off appears in the screen here. But like I said, you have that same control here. We can turn it on and off here. And we can make adjustments uh, to the, the view, uh, the flame. We can make adjustments to the flame here, color, color changes, temperature changes, temperature settings. 
color. Or we can do that here. There's also a timer button. You can set that timer uh, to go off uh, for what for for the time that you set. Two hours, hour and a half, whatever. So you can make the adjustments here, or you can do it manually right here. And then when you're finished, you can just turn it off. This is the screen where you're going to feel uh, those adjustments to the amount of heat. Uh, that heat will come out here. Just below the fireplace is extra storage. And you'll see uh, louvers here. That uh, is for your ITR Oasis, for your hydronic heat. Here you'll see the intervac connection. Um, if you're just sweeping debris here, you can use this one to sweep in there. And it'll go into the, uh, the basement uh, collection. Um, if you want to use the accessories, that's where you would plug those accessories in here. And in the baggage compartment is your, all of your accessories um, for your intervac. So the main hookup is the, the end of this hose. So we got our accessories out. The end of this hose is what you're going to connect here. Uh, there is a warning here to check and ensure that the dust bag and the motor filter are installed in the power unit, which is, of course, in the baggage compartment downstairs. So you want to make sure that you have a bag in, um, in that box because that's going to filter all the dust out before you turn it on. So you open this up. There's another warning uh, telling you the same thing. Check and make sure you have a bag there. So... Um, you'll want to remove this label, just your warning label. So we make our connection here, and then this is the control switch to turn it on and off. There's a little LED light that tells you it's on, but you still should be able to hear it in the basement come on. and off. If you don't get the LED light there and it's not turning on and off, you can remove this. There's a battery under here. You may need to replace the battery. If you don't understand how to operate it, scan the QR code and you can go online and learn more about it here. When you're finished, just pull the hose out and you can stow this back in the basement compartment. Just be uh, careful if you do store this uh, on or near something that touches that it could inadvertently turn it on so just try to try to make so that that's turned away from uh, anything that might depress it um, just above the fireplace uh, we have additional storage area here with backlighting magnetic door close just make sure that you close them and hear the magnets lock. Now we'll move over into the kitchen. Okay, so uh, we're moving into the kitchen. Um, we have, of course, cabinets up here in the kitchen. Um, you'll notice that you have a large uh, black case that comes with your coach. Um, be sure and uh, review all the documents in this case because you have all of your warranty registration and um, operating guides for plumbing, heating, exterior, electrical, and your appliances. So you want to make sure to mail in your uh, registrations for those products so your warranty um, is uh, starting uh, from your date of purchase. The uh, Newware operating guide is in here. There's uh, additional keys for your safe. Um, just review the whole packet. Uh, make sure you're familiar with your coach information and registration for your, all your warranties. Uh, additional drawer here. Now there's a cord here that's not plugged in right now. 
Um, but that 120 volt outlet is labeled microwave 15 amp. So that cord goes over here uh, and it's for your microwave. Just to the left of that is additional storage space. And if you take a look in this cabinet, you're gonna notice Numar uh, put additional labels in here for your coach information, model serial number, um, vehicle weight information, and also all of your paint codes are in here um, for your exterior paint. Here at the countertop, we have removable covers for your sink. They store down here. We have your on and off here, hot and cold. Um, with the telescoping spray. We have the telescoping trash compartment and drawer space here. These covers on the back side uh, are cutting board. So you've got uh, cutting boards on the back side of those covers for your cooktop. This is a true induction uh, cooktop. So the, the pans that you would use need to be uh, magnetic type. Aluminum won't work. To turn them on and off, there's just a switch here. Um, if it doesn't sense a pan there, uh, it will time out and go off. But then after you put the pan in place, you'll be able to make the adjustments for uh, plus warmer and minus uh, for less heat. You can see here it switched off because we don't have anything on the cooktop. This is removable so you can take it outside. You can lift it up. You can see here that there's a plug there. I can unplug it and I can take it outside if I like. It's mobile. Then, of course, when I'm finished, I just take my cutting boards and I put them back in place. Just below that, I have a large drawer here. You'll notice uh, all of your controls and a lot of your accessories that come with the coach are in this drawer. Um, we'll show you how to use these tools if we haven't already. Uh, this is your whole house filter wrench. This one you saw earlier for your, um, your iPad at your passenger seat. And uh, we'll go through some of these others, um, awning, uh, remotes, and things like that in a little bit. Uh, below that, we've got the dishwasher. The dishwasher um, is locked. So when you travel, you want to make sure that is locked. Right now, with the power button turned off, it's locked, so it can't open. If you turn it on, it unlocks, and we can open it. We also can control the lock here, lock and unlock. Press and hold again. It will go out and then we can turn it off and it locks. Just refer to your owner's manual for more instructions on those operations. Moving over to the refrigerator, you'll notice uh, there's a locking mechanism here. So if I grab the handle for the refrigerator, I cannot open the doors. Um, I can't open the freezer door either. So this is a travel lock and you should leave it engaged if you're gonna be traveling down the highway because you don't want these doors to fly open and uh, have an accident with your food. So that is in the lock position. To the right is unlock. So now we've unlocked the doors, we can open them, okay? So Numar adds this lock uh, just for that reason, because 
you would be traveling, you don't want these doors to open up. So this is a Samsung stainless steel refrigerator, three doors with the freezer. There's an ice maker on the left. Um, ice maker tray is out right now, but there's a deep freezer here. Um, there is, uh, this comes with the refrigerator. Uh, the filter just is a insert and turn. You can see here that locks it in place when you turn it. If you want to operate it, you can see here is our touchpad on the right for temperature control, freezer control, peak demand, ice maker on and off. And if you change the water filter, um, you'll get the water filter uh, light LED. They have uh, additional controls via Wi-Fi. If you want to control your refrigerator that way, you can just scan the QR code and get online and um, those directions are online. Close the doors same way and then just remember if you're going to be traveling you want to lock those doors so you don't want those sliding open while you travel. Just to the right of that we have our pantry. Uh, these drawers are locked so if you, if you grab a hold of them and pull they won't come out until you push first and then that releases it so same here if I pull I won't release but if I push first then pull it'll come out so push pull and then to lock just push and it locks in place so they're all locked to close the door it has a magnetic latch here there is a magnetic switch so that when i close that light will the lights will go out just outside of your bathroom um, wall here is your main screen uh, touch control panel so this displays what's going on in your coach and it also gives you the ability just uh, touching uh, in the panel on on these buttons, how it helps you see what's going on and control what happens in your coach. So starting at the top left, you have your light dimmer, so you can make it brighter or dimmer. And below that, we have your basic home screen. So at our home screen, you're going to view your fresh black and gray tank uh, levels of full or empty. You're going to view your house battery at 100% and your chassis battery at 14.2 volts. So because your batteries are lithium, they are measured in percentage versus the chassis batteries which are a different type of battery. Those are AGM batteries. They're measured in voltages. And uh, just beside, you'll see that it's saying that they are bridged. So there's a charge bridging solenoid that's showing that they're connected at the time. Uh, if you remember earlier in the video, you can connect them manually with the dash boost switch. If one were lower and you needed to boost, just below that, you have the indication of whether you're plugged into shore. It's highlighted so we know our shore cord is plugged in. And it's showing that leg one on the shore cord and leg two both have power and how many amps are being pulled on each one of those legs. On the AC power indicator, we've, it again shows the shore connection, amperage and voltage. It's showing that our charger is set at 30 amps and that our inverter one is off, inverter two is off. If I wanna change those settings, I can turn them on here and they're in standby mode right now, or I can turn them off. Our load shed <clears throat> um, is, is set up uh, at a current capacity of 50 amps. Keep in mind if you're at a park where you have a smaller uh, cord or plug 
and your pole is only going to be 15 amps or 20, you want to set the capacity down because <clears throat> um, it will always show 30. It will never show that you're only plugged into maybe a 20 amp circuit. So setting it to a lower setting is good if you're parked somewhere where you have or you don't have at least 30 amps. Moving down to the DC power, it's showing our house battery is at 100% full, and you can tell because it's completely blued out. It's uh, uh, showing absorb and float charge, and both chargers, meaning the inverters are turned on. At our generator screen, Right now, it's showing the generator is stopped. If I wanted to manually start it, I could do that. Um, right now, the auto gen start um, is in the AGS settings are here. Uh, if I want to go to those settings and turn them on and off, I can do that here. Our water shows, again, fresh black and gray. Our tanks are empty. Water pump is off. We can obviously turn the water pump on and off here. If we want our fresh tank to be auto filled, we can turn that on here or off. We also have the function or the feature of topping off the tank or filling just the top off. In our climate, we see that our snowflake is on, which means that our air conditioner is running right now. And we can see that all of the zones are set here. If I want to turn on an individual zone, then I can select, for instance, bedroom. And then now I can turn the fan on or off, or I can change the temperature settings here. If I just want to set all of the air conditioners or heat to the same, then I would select all. We also have a block heater setting here. We can turn the block heater on. If it's uh, cold outside and we want to have heat going into the engine block before we start, and it's like a preheat for the engine, we can turn that on here or off. Again, our batteries state of charge is here. Those are showing that not only the state of charge, how many amp hours are available. Um, it's showing the temperature um, and, and more detailed information as you go down. If we go to coach mode, uh, it gives us additional selections of whether you might be outdoor unplugged, then you would select that. Or if you're, out, if you're outdoors and you're plugged in, you could select that one. And each time you make that type of a selection, it tells you what it's enabling or disabling. If you're indoor and unplugged, you're disabling the inverters and you're disabling auto gen. Why? Because you wouldn't want the generator to start if you are indoors or in a garage because you don't want the exhaust. So using these, like say indoor but plugged in, uh, making these selections is a good idea because it automatically selects the most safe and efficient way of operating your generators and charging your batteries in your coach. And then you have to hit activate to make those come on. So whichever I turn on, hit activate and it'll highlight it. That means it's on. Floor heat, front, mid and rear. You can turn them on and off by scrolling up on any one of those. Or you can just go down or up. So however you like to turn those on and off. They're not set for a exact heat amount, but they're set for the amount of time that they're on. So they might be on a minute or two versus being on uh, longer than that, the higher you go, they stay on longer, but they don't actually turn off at a specific heat setting, that they're on timers. The lights, of course, we can go to the light setting, 
turn on kitchen, bedroom, bath, uh, living room, kitchen, ceiling, or exterior just by selecting those. Then now I can turn on the exterior. Courtesy lights we can turn on and off, or we can uh, do it right here, on and off. Our shades, we can operate our shades here. Door locks, entrance door or cargo locks on and off, and our vent fans. We have two fans, one in the kitchen and one in the master bath. We can turn those on and off here as well. So that's on for the master, and then that's off. There is a gear icon. Uh, the gear icon is in the background, so you can view uh, some of those uh, screens here. Uh, you won't typically have to go into that screen, but they're here. And you can see there are warning configurations, tablet Wi-Fi, ROSI settings, system component list network diagnostics. Um, you can scroll through these if you need to go into those and make an adjustment. If you don't understand them, refer to your owner's manual. There's more detailed information there or get a hold of Numar or your dealer and they'll help you uh, look or see if you need to make any of those settings. So don't change anything unless you're sure about what you're changing. We're going to move into the half bath. So to unlock the door for the bath, we just push down and the pocket door will slide and lock into place. So now that door is locked into place. So you come in the bathroom um, you notice here we've got the sink, um, cabinet, medicine cabinet. Uh, there's an additional plug here, the plug for 120 volt. If you need to charge something or plug in an accessory. Cabinet space here and below. Another 120 volt outlet plug, uh, the louvers for your heat, forced air heat. Of course, this is your on and off, cold and warm. The Dometic power flush shows uh, you have power here at the switch. And to flush, we just press the button here. If we want to add water to the bowl, we just press this button after the flush is over. So we could add a little bit of water here. That brings up the level of water in the bowl. If you see the tank level LED illuminated, that means that the tank, uh, if it turns amber, that your tank is getting close, the black tank is close to full. If this turns red, you won't be able to flush. There is an emergency exit door uh, to get out of the coach if you can't make it to the front or the front door is locked and you need to exit the coach. Here's your lock and unlock. So you want to unlock that, unlock here. This door will open so you can exit the coach. Now you'll notice here there's a panel with a grab handle. So if I pull this after I open this door, if I pull this off, there's magnets that hold that on. There's a ladder, and I can flip that open after I release this Velcro here. I'll be able to escape out of the coach just by these stairs going down. So now I can exit the coach in an emergency. Uh, if I just want to store those back, um, emergency's over, lift those up put the Velcro back, and then put my cover in place. I'll go outside to demonstrate that. Okay, to put the ladder back in place, so just grab a hold. It telescopes, telescopes back in place, and just lift up, put it in place, and then get our Velcro across. Put our panel back and our magnets will hold it in place. Then we can close the door again. We've closed the door to lock it uh, because you, you can't open it from the outside. You wanna lock it here and here. 
So now we're locked. Uh, the shades here are controlled here with our touch panel. They're electric power shades, so we can close and open those here. Our shower has another lock because we don't want this door to be sliding while we travel. So we want to make sure that that lock is pushed down and locked in place to travel. But when we want to use the shower, now we unlock it and now we can slide the doors. On the inside, uh, you've got the overhead or the handheld shower part. You can turn one on or the other. When you make that selection, uh, it'll spray out of one or the other. You'll notice that there is a LED light indicator here. So what that is, if we turn that on with our touch panel, let's do that. It will save water out of your fresh water tank. It's, it's an aquamizer. So what it's going to do is the water that's coming from your fresh tank that's cold before it gets warm, uh, you're not going to lose that water. So we turn it on, it illuminates, and until the water that's coming out of the fresh tank is warm, that's going to stay the same color. Once the hot water starts coming through, that will turn red. Once that turns red, then we can turn this valve, You'll, you can see there's an emblem on there. We can turn this so that the water then will come through instead of recycling back to the fresh tank. That just helps save uh, a lot of water out of your fresh tank. Uh, it just recirculates. Uh, one word of caution is if you've got that turned on here and you're filling your tank, um, you're going to have water that can that that could overfill. So you want to make sure when you're done with your shower, turn that off, uh, and then turn off uh, the aquamizer, and that light will go out. So in the shower here, that is the drain. There is a seat that you can extend or retract here. And of course, when you're finished, again, just make sure that you close this so that your doors don't slide open and close while you travel. Above here on the ceiling, you have your uh, ventilation fan. This is a fantastic fan. Uh, it can be manually opened. If you wanted to, you could grab a hold of this handle and just open it manually, all right? and air will go out here, or you can manually close it. If in an emergency that would work, but obviously you would want to turn that on and off here on the panel um, under system or fans. So you go to fans, uh, now you can turn it on high, medium, or low. Let's just go medium. You can, uh, let's go to master bath, turn it on medium. Now we can see our fan turning on and it's opening up. So if you want to turn it off, fan off. Now you can hear it close. And as the lid closes, the fan will shut off. There is a rain sensor so that if you turned the fan um, on and it was open, if it started to rain outside, um, it would automatically close the vent and the fan would go off. If it's just uh, maybe a situation where there was moisture on the roof or something that got on the rain sensor, you can override the rain sensor just by pressing the rain sensor override and that will allow the fan to operate regardless of whether there's a little moisture on the rain sensor or not. We're coming into the bedroom and we have another sliding door. So if we wanna, it's locked in place right now. 
But if we want to unlock it, we push down and slide. And as it moves over to the end of travel, it locks again in place. So we're locked. So to open and close it, we always have to follow that arrow, push down and open or close. So back on the wall here, we've got our speaker switches. So if, we're, if we have our radio on at the dash, we can turn one or both speakers on here in the overhead and we can have music back here in the bedroom. Just above that is our temperature monitor. Uh, this monitors the temperature in the rear of the coach or uh, this particular zone. We have extra storage in these compartments above the bed. There's another 120 volt plug there. Uh, windows on both ends and the front uh, we have a nightstands. Uh, the nightstands have an additional, you can't see it, but there's another 120 volt plug here at the nightstand and there's an open area right at the top so that you could plug something in to that recept and not have to open this door. Underneath the bed, we can, we can lift this bed up. And we can see that's our storage area for our table uh, leaf extensions. There is uh, additional controls and uh, motor uh, for the slide underneath here, but those are underneath these panels here on both sides. These are removable, but they're screwed in place. So moving over here to the other side of the bed is just more storage area. Uh, another nightstand with the 120 volt receptacle in the back uh, with an opening here to plug things in if you need. As you're laying in bed, you'll be able to look up um, above on the bottom side of this uh, cabinet you'll see a touch panel. That touch panel, just a touch to illuminate, it's um, for the, all the shades and lighting in this area. It's just same as on the wall over there. Controls for the bedroom here. Moving over here, we've got our closet space and our safe. Uh, the safe has uh, its own key and passcode. And then once you use the passcode to get in, you can set your own passcode, um, one that you can remember. Um, there is a light switch here on the end of the door that controls when you open and close the door, the light will go on and off. It automatically locks in this spot here. You can hear it lock. We open this one. We have additional space uh, storage for shoes. I have a, a cabinet here that's uh, the door is um, for our electrical compartment, our breakers, our breaker box, and we've labeled all of them main, dryer washer, dishwasher, fireplace, inverters, water heater, air conditioners. Um, each one's labeled, so and they're all turned on when they're towards the center. If one is tripped, you'll notice that it's to the uh, outside of the box. If either one of these were tripped, it would be that way. Typically, when these breakers trip, they don't trip all the way to the right or left. They only trip about halfway, so if you see one that's got maybe just not quite all the way left, but it's not quite all the way right, it's kind of in between there, you'll have to move it all the way to the off position and then back on to reset it. So all the way to the outside and then back in, that's to reset. So these are all of our 120 volt uh, appliances and the breakers for those. You'll notice similar breakers here but these breakers are powered from inverter one and inverter two. So the main front air driver slide out 
and passenger slide out are all powered up by the inverter number one. So if those trip, same thing, you'll have to reset that back to on. Our extra or spare 12 volt fuses are for use in this box. This box houses our 12 volt fuses. Those 12 volt fuses are labeled here. And if you look here, that's uh, TV accessories, um, security lights, power vent, water heaters, HVAC controls, awnings, uh, power stools. So if any one of these appliances uh, fails to work or turn on, you'd wanna find that, uh, like say your security lights didn't work, you'd go over here F7, and then you'd come over here to F7. You can pull that fuse, take a look if it's okay, if it's tripped or not. If it is tripped, then you'd find the same color typically and the same number. Um, the number of the fuse is right on the front. So this one's a 15 and then you'd replace that fuse here. So there is uh, this type of uh, mini breaker. If this trips, you won't replace it. You'll just reset it here on the front end. So this is our 12 volt fuses for all of these appliances. And these are our 120 volt breakers here and here for the 120 volt appliances. So when you're done servicing this area, be sure you close the doors and put the covers back on and tighten your screws with a screwdriver. Just to the right here, we have our floor heat. Our floor heat has its own GFCI breaker. Um, the little LED light illuminates when it's on. If it trips, you can reset it right here. This is our connection for our bedroom floor heat. Um, the service to service that, you'd have to take this cover off. And that pretty much covers everything in this uh, door, except uh, you do have a complete appliance list of all the appliances in your coach here. If you're going to replace one of your appliances and you're not sure what model or serial number is, come back here and you get the right model and serial number to replace it. That way you'll be sure to get the same BTU rating, size and fit. This door panel here is for access to turn on and off the hot and cold water to your washer and dryer. And we'll show you that in just a minute. So just above the shoe storage compartment, we have our lighting control. Um, this panel has four screws to hold it in, but if you had a lighting issue um, or lighting control issue, this is the panel that you'd remove to access uh, the KIB lighting controls. So these doors have uh, this position lock, which should hold the door, but you, for travel, you wanna make sure they're both locked so that they neither one moves. That's what this lock is for. So if you grab a hold of this lock and pull it down, that will keep these doors from moving left or right, front or back. So this would unlock, this locks. So to open it, just leave it up. You can slide, ready to travel, put it down. So just beside the closet, we have uh, bifold doors uh, for access to your washer and dryer. Uh, the dryer is just 120 volt. Um, setting it uh, to auto dry or uh, the timer dry here. Uh, the wash, uh, if you're going to do a load of wash, we have put a little tag on here that we want you to remove the outside drain cap for the gray tank. Um, and we want you to open that valve because as the clothes go through the wash cycle and the rinse cycle, uh, a lot of water is passing through and we don't want your gray tank to fill up. So if you open that gray tank drain and make sure your sewer connections are connected to the outside, all of this water will drain out instead of filling your gray tank. Just refer to your operator's manual uh, for more information on uh, the different types of cycles and operating 
um, with your touch panel control. So there's, uh, there's two additional panels here on the floor on this step up that are access to the engine. So this is an engine access panel. Um, these black plugs need to be removed um, and the screws taken out. This panel needs to be removed uh, first. After this panel comes, there's two clips, they just pull out, then you would remove the bottom one to access the engine. Obviously that's for service um, at your, uh, your chassis uh, service shop. So here we have another television and uh, this cabinet to the right of it is the audio visual cabinet. Uh, this cabinet has your additional plugs, uh, 15 amp, 120 volt, um, roof mount satellite if you had it, and your connections, uh, which are labeled source uh, Blu-ray DVD. So this is where you would mount and um, plug in your satellite receiver if you had um, that option. And uh, this is a cable plug um, for the roof mount satellite here. Of course, this is the TV and the remote you would use to operate that. We have more storage space here. A lot of extra storage here in these drawers and cabinet. To operate the shades again, if you want to open or close them, you just go to your touch panel here, um, go to the home screen, select shades. Um, and of course, we've got our night shades down. If you select the bedroom shades, now you can see they're going up. There is an egress window here for an emergency exit. So in the event that you were in this room, you needed to get out in an emergency, the red handle just grab the red handle, pull it to the right, and then this uh, window will slide over and then you could exit out in an emergency. So then of course to close it, you can just close it and lock in place. There's an air conditioner in the rear of the coach and the filters for that air conditioner in this rear zone are inside of this, uh, what we call a compartment. The louvers and this tool, if you put this up inside these louvers, then you can pull down. And once you pull this down, you'll be able to access the filters So the air that's coming out comes through these openings here on the driver's side. The air that's going back up into the ductwork that gets heated or cooled goes through these filters. So these filters need to be kept clean. So you can grab a hold of these registers and you can open this up, take this out, blow it out, and then rinse it with warm soapy water, then uh, clean water, rinse it thoroughly. You can wring it out, let it air dry, put it back in place, and then pop it back in the opening after they're clean and dry. Then you'll see the two clips here and here. They clip on both ends. You just wanna make sure that this uh, wire for the lighting stays over to the side. Then you can close this, line up your locks, and clip into place. Just to the front of the louvers, you've got uh, another carbon monoxide detector. Um, it will test and operate similar to the smoke detector in that it has an LED light that flashes uh, intermittently. You can see the light here will flash 
it tells you you've got battery power but to make a quick test you just press and hold the center you'll hear the beep that tells you that it's active and that it would alarm if there was co2 in the room if you don't if you don't get the alarm um, or led light just squeeze and pull down check your battery may need a new battery replace that battery and do the same thing to test it again to make sure it works so these uh, air conditioning and heat pump movers and the filters are in the same exact configuration as the ones we just looked at in the bedroom and they use the same tool to open and close the louvers so there's a louver here that you'll need to bring down and that one it's the exact same thing you just put your tool in and pull down all right and then in the same way you just take your filter pull it out clean it once it's dry, put it back in place. And then make sure that our wiring is slightly to the side. This one, line everything up and then push it back up and it should lock in place. We're on the outside of the new air here. Um, starting at this corner at the front, You'll see we have a flag uh, pole holder and insert. So uh, that would just be inserted in here uh, for your flag. And of course that comes with your coach if you have that option. This is the uh, side camera so that when you turn on your turn signal, that view is displayed on the side or 360 view if you turn the 360 view on this is the side camera there's another camera on the other side does the exact same thing when you turn on the left turn for the driver's side then this view of that camera is out on this side so looking up the door awning uh, door awning is controlled uh, either manually in the overhead um, or with the door awning remote. The steps here are electric, uh, which is 12 volt electric. And these steps, if you open the door, you see they will open with the door. There's magnets here that line up with a magnetic switch so that when this door magnet lines up with those, that will open and operate to open and close of the step. If I want the steps to stay open, I go in the overhead, turn on the step switch, and then the step stays out. I'll show you. I went inside and I turned the step switch on in the overhead, so when I close this door, the steps should stay out now. So that's how you keep the steps out, whether the door is in or out. So if we open the door again, you'll notice that in addition to the outside manual locks, which I can lock and unlock my deadbolt manually like this, I can lock and unlock either the door or the deadbolt, or I can come in here if I'm inside the coach, I can manually lock and unlock the handle, which is the red one, or the deadbolt here. Now, the key fob does the same thing, except it doesn't operate the deadbolt. So I can lock and unlock the door here or the baggage compartment doors. You'll hear back behind me. But for the deadbolt, that has to be manually done from the inside. The screen has a small lock here for open and closing just the screen door, which I can do here and then I can close the slider. From the inside, I can open this one by pushing down on that lever and then open the screen door like that and latch here. If you notice at the top of the screen door, there's a pull down screen. So you can go up here 
grab a hold and I can lock it. Now I have a full screen door. So when I close it, I've got screen on the top and the bottom. To retract it, just the same thing, go up to retract. If I don't have my key fob or my keys to lock or unlock the door, I can still unlock my doors here. I have to know my passcode. The passcode when it comes from Numar is very simple. You just have to remember five numbers. One, two, three, four, four, and then one unlocks the door. So one, two, three, four, four, one, we'll lock, unlock the door. To lock the door again, just press and hold the number one, and then that will lock the door. You heard it lock. If I want to unlock the baggage compartment, I can do that from the handle. It's the same series of numbers, one, two, three, four, four, two. And that unlocks both baggage and door. So one just unlocks the door, two unlocks the door and the baggage compartment at the same time. You'll need to set your own passcode when you get your coach so that your passcode is original to use, one that you can remember to um, change the passcode to your own original five digit number. There's a switch on the side of the steering column that you'll press and hold and then this will go into a series of beeping patterns where you can reset your own passcode. That's a little bit more detailed so you need to refer to your owner's operator's guide and try mark and that will help you set your new passcode. There are two latches in the door, the first latch and the second. So if I just close the door lightly, close the door lightly, or I'm, in, I'm only in the first latch and you can see that this is not flush. So I would have air noise if I drove away with the door not fully latched into the second latch. So if I wanna make sure I'm in the second latch, I have to close it more firmly. Now I'm in the second latch. You can see now the door is flush and I would not have any air noise or wind noise as I drove. So above the door is our door awning and you can manually um, open or close it with this uh, twist handle. You just need to insert it in the end on this side, on the left-hand side. Once it locks, you can turn it and it will open up the awning. Or close in the event that it wouldn't close with the power motor. And then to re once you close it, then you remove it. So the door awning is operated with the inside switch, but when you're standing outside, there's a secondary remote for the main two awnings. This does not control the door awning. That has to be done from the inside. The Girard switch on the inside controls these two main awnings, or you can bring the one that's labeled Girard to the outside, and it controls the two outside awnings. Once I press the channel button, I see an L. That means it's locked. So I will have to press the unlock button here. That unlocks it. So initially you have to unlock it by pressing the unlock button. Now I can go in or out after I select the channels. To operate the front or rear awning, they're labeled one and two. But if I turn the controller to zero, that should open both awnings at the same time. So if I go to zero and out, both awnings will open. And at any time as they're opening, 
I can press the stop. If I don't press anything, they'll just open to the preset uh, distance and they'll stop on their own. If I want to have the LED lighting on, I can press the LED light button on one or both. Just press it again if you want both or press it again for lights out. And they will automatically come to a stop. The amount or adjustment of travel can be changed at the motor. Also at the motor, uh, at the top, there is uh, a, a wrench uh, that comes with your accessories. In the event that the awnings were stuck open or you couldn't get them closed, uh, power issue or motor issue, if you get on top of the coach, this inserts at the motor and you can turn this manually uh, to retract one and then put it in the other awning and retract the other. So. This tool is uh, just in case you have an emergency where uh, you're not getting your controller or manually controlling on the inside to work and close the awning. So now I can close the awning just by pressing the in because I'm, let's see what channel I'm still on to zero, which is both. So I go in and that will close both awnings. If I do hit stop, both will stop. If I just want to put one in now and leave one partially out or all the way out, I can just go back to the channel, go to channel two. Channel two is the rear awning. Go to channel, channel one and go in. So you can do both at the same time with zero or switch to one or two and do them individually for open or close. And once I've stored the awnings, I wanna make sure and hit my LED light switch off and that'll turn the lights out. So if I'm turning my LED lights on, it will turn on the one that I selected the channel for. So if I wanna select both of my lights at the same time for on and off, then I would select zero, both on, both off. So at the front of the coach, obviously we've got the wheel well here. There's actually cables, they're called lanyards. Um, I've got my light on on the flashlight here. You'll notice here, there's small cables. Those are called lanyards. If you reach in and grab a hold of those lanyards and pull, you can do one at a time or you can do both at the same time. What you're doing is you're releasing the air out of the system to, to keep moisture from building up in the air lines. And that should be done at least, uh, if, if you drive your coach a lot, that should be done uh, once a week. If you don't drive that often, you still should do it at least once a month. You come over here, you can see this is the airbag that you're riding on. And behind that, um, not sure you can see it, but that's our jack uh, for leveling behind that. For the tire pressure, you can refer to your owner's manual. The tire pressure is also uh, rated on the tire. The fill is here. If you need to check your pressure, you do that here or fill with air. You've got your uh, fuel door here. Um, the fuel tanks are connected, so whether you're filling the fuel here or on the other side, um, it's going to fill both sides uh, equally. So uh, above the passenger window, you've got your patio light, docking lights, and then uh, we'll show you the security lights in a little bit. Um, you have another Girard awning here uh, that's a Girard window awning that's controlled from the inside panel at the front. Just above that Girard uh, window awning, 
is your slide topper awning. The slide topper awning automatically extends as the room travels out and it keeps debris and rain uh, from getting on top of your slide room. So when the slide room is all the way out, before you run it in, take a walk around your coach, check underneath at, from the ends, just look at the ends and make sure there's nothing, uh, branch or debris that got underneath between the fabric of the slide topper and the roof so that when it closes, uh, nothing is gonna get caught in that awning fabric. Uh, our first compartment baggage door here is our basement freezer. Our basement freezer operates on both 120 volt and 12 volt, and those plugs are right here. So you've got a 120 volt plug and a 12 volt plug. Right now, the 120 volt's not plugged in, but we'll plug that in. To access it, just pull the tray out. Uh, this is uh, Bluetooth uh, compatible, so you can connect to your freezer via Bluetooth. Um, on and off is here, and then your settings for temperature for freezer. Uh, you can actually turn this into a colder setting to make the whole thing freeze or refrigerator. So you can change the settings up and down, a wide range of settings. Definitely uh, go through your manual uh, to learn more about all your settings and Bluetooth compatibility. Um, this is another slide tray for storage. It is power tray. And when we open the doors, any compartment door, the magnetic switch here and here, the magnet comes close to the magnetic switch and turns out the lights automatically. So this uh, compartment is also a power tray. We, uh, we looked at this uh, earlier. This is your InterVac uh, accessory bag. Uh, Numar includes um, tiles that came out of your lot. Uh, that are in your coach so that they match in case you have a tile that needs to be replaced in the future. The tile will match in color and size. Um, these long screws are used to manually retract the full wall slide on either side. Uh, these uh, uh, retract the HWH slide rooms um, it's, a, it's a little bit of a detailed process uh, and they have to be manually turned. So you'll have to uh, refer to your owner's manual on how that's done. But if you have a slide room that's out and it won't go back in, these are the tools you need to close those slides in an emergency. So leave these in your coach. Um, that way you've got them handy if you need them. There's an additional latch here on this door that you have to push down to open the left-hand side. The power tray is still here. And there's a accessory spare air hose here if you need to fill up inflatables or <clears throat> you want to connect this to the air uh, supply at the front of your coach. We'll show you where that is. You can air up your tires in your coach. And there's more storage here, but there's also um, a lot of your electronic controls. And they're all labeled. So we'll, when you look at uh, these labels, uh, these, these are your camera 
uh, connections here um, for all the cameras around your coach, your 360 degree view. Um, these are for your shade controls, living room, kitchen, dresser. Um, these are all your dry contacts. There's uh, additional 120 volt plug here, floor heat connections, bedroom slide out controls. So in the event that uh, you need to have the service of the or checking of any of those functions the cameras slide out controls shades and those are all located in this compartment here uh, just above this window you've got another uh, gerard awning that's your uh, shade for that window Another docking light there, more storage compartment here. And our last compartment here is not a sealed compartment. And the reason for that is we don't wanna seal the bottom because we have batteries in this compartment. So they need to have air movement around them. So that's why you see some of the, the dust here a little bit because it's, it's not a sealed compartment. So these are the batteries for the chassis to start the engine or operate the dash controls in the cockpit of the coach. These are connected and can be used when the disconnects are turned on. They're both on right now. If I turn them off, I won't be able to operate or start the engine or operate the controls in the cockpit. I would want to, to leave these off or turn them off if I was going to store the coach for more than, uh, you know, like say a day or two. I, wanna, I don't want these batteries to discharge from the ECM drain or any other small drains because they will discharge over time. If I'm going to store the coach in my garage or just out in the parking lot, I want to make sure that I turn these to zero or off. Zero means off. So these batteries don't drain. That way, when I come back to the coach a few days later, I can turn these back on and I can still start my coach and operate it normally. There are fuses. The chass some of the chassis fuses are down here in this compartment here. Rotate that counterclockwise and on the back side, you'll notice there's labels for those items. So you've got uh, relays here and you've got fuses here and all of those chassis related fuses and relays are here and they're labeled. For instance, uh, I can see here reverse, uh, trailer right side, shift selector, starting solenoid and on down the, on the line, neutral, on guard ignition. So when a chassis item fails, um, this is the area you would come to to check a fuse. Once you located what you think would be the fuse issue, like say for instance, the location F17, which is your ECM ignition, then you would remove this small fuse puller Grab a hold of the fuse, pull it out, and there's spare fuses in here. If it's blown, replace it. Then put your fuse puller back in its slot. Just a special note that your tow plug power for your vehicle, that is powered up through this fuse panel here. So if you lose your tow lights or functions for brake or whatever, come back to this area here. Um, these are our air dryer and fuel filters. So our exterior entertainment center is here under this door. 
Uh, the key for it is here, just turn on lock. And you've got your TV and sound bar. Uh, to adjust um, which speakers you want to use, that's over here if you want to use your Bose. Um, you'll notice there's a, a dial here that says TV off or dash radio. So if I want the TV sound, I turn over here. If I want the sound bar to have the dash radio sound, I have to go turn it to the right where it shows dash radio and then turn the radio into a mode called house mode. Then the sound will come out here. There's an additional 120 volt plug here and here. This uh, TV can be moved and turned at an angle. So if you grab a hold of it, you can turn that and adjust it the way you like. And then when you're finished, just stow it back in place and then close and lock the door. We're gonna demonstrate the rear lights, uh, brake lights, running lights, uh, turn signals. Um, he, those were the brake lights. You can see he's uh, going to start the coach. You can see our he's got he's turned the lights on. There's our right turn signal, and he'll do his left. It's our emergency flash. Brake light. Reverse. Marker lights on, marker lights out. You should always check your marker lights, turn signals, and uh, brake lights, including the backup lights, before you travel. That way, you know, you, everyone can tell when you're going to make a turn or when your brake lights are on. This is our rear view camera here, facing the back. Down below here, we have our, our tow brake. Our accessories, uh, our plug for our brake, uh, we have accessories for that in the bag in the front. Uh, we also have the accessories for our rear wheel, our real wheels gear nut wrench, so you can take your gear nut off on the center of your wheels. Uh, this is, uh, of course, your plug for your tow vehicle. This is the release for your rear engine latch. There's, uh, this one's labeled ITR Oasis. Uh, this is your, your boiler antifreeze solution for your hydronic furnace. So the fluid expands and comes back into this compartment. And then as it cools, it, it will go down to a lower level. So just make sure that this is maintained. It's uh, full. It looks maybe slightly overfill right now, but should be that line at the upper level and uh, the lower level is here. This is a special uh, fluid, so refer to your owner's manual when you fill this. It's not just regular antifreeze solution. Um, it's a type of FDA approved solution uh, for that ITR Oasis system. Uh, moving over here, um, we've got our hydraulic oil for our chassis. Um, our engine preheat plug here. Just plug and block heater. That preheats your engine. Uh, this is our engine oil fill. This is where we check. This is our dipstick. If we need to add oil, this is where we add it here. Um, this is your transmission fluid. This is uh, not only the dipstick, but also where you add it here. Just below that is an air, uh, an air 
filter monitor. So if the filter monitor is in the green range, the yellow uh, diaphragm, which moves up and down, will stay in the green. If the yellow diaphragm goes into the red, that means you need to change your air filter. Where is your air filter? It's right here in this canister. So if this goes into the red, you'll need to have someone get into that and change that air filter. This is the final charge or antifreeze for your engine coolant. Uh, make sure that you see that it has that tinted kind of reddish color uh, so that it's full. Um, Uh, the backup beeper is here. Uh, the sound that you hear when you put your coach in reverse comes from this box right here. When you're done with uh, this compartment or servicing, just grab a hold and push down to close and latch. Up at the top corner, uh, there's a air screen that lets air go into the tube that goes down to your air filter. So you got to make sure that stays open, nothing blocking it, to get air into your air filter uh, for your combustion of your engine. The same with the, these louvers on the side. This is for your uh, transmission cooler and other uh, radiators. Um, you want to make sure this stays uh, clear because you're going to have a lot of air movement through here to keep your engine cool. That's your DEF tank and fill. Just open this up to fill your DEF. This slide is open at the moment. You'll notice here on the ends we talked about earlier, there's a fabric that covers the top. So when you are ready to close or retract uh, this slide, you wanna make sure there's nothing in between the fabric and the top of that roof on both ends. Make sure they're clear. This is a locking mechanism so that when the room goes all the way in, this is forced back and it locks the room in place. Again, this is the emergency exit door at the bathroom. There is a security light that you can turn on and off here at the water bay or inside, and that's a 360, uh, it's basically your surround view or 360 degree view camera here on the side and just your marker light here. This is our water compartment. Our water compartment houses our fresh tank controls, gray tank and black tank controls, um, also our water pump, <clears throat> whole house filter, and we're gonna go over how, how these are connected. So to fill uh, our water tanks or to have water in the coach, we have to connect it here. So this hose is pulled out and then this is taken to the city water or water connection. When, it, when we're done with it, we can retract it with the power cord, but it's gonna be out. We're gonna connect that to our water pressure, no more than 60 PSI. The water comes in this hose and then it goes into this filter container, which has this filter. This is a whole house filter. So you wanna install this when you get your coach new this is the filter wrench. Put your filter wrench on, turn it open, drop your filter in, put it back up, and then tighten the filter clockwise, and then you'll have fresh, clean water. If you're going to winterize the coach, remove this filter, or you'll have to get a new one later, because once the anif uh, the, the um, antifreeze for the winterizing gets into it, you can't get it out or rinse it out. So just remember, take this out if you're gonna winterize it, if you wanna save it to use again. This hose uh, is best to be tucked in here 
and and kept away from this exhaust. Um, this is the ITR exhaust, and so if you uh, make sure to keep that just uh, away from here, not touching, so it doesn't melt. If you look here, you'll see a silver type box with uh, some louvers. Um, this is actually a heater, so this bay has heat. Um, it's automatically it's automatically adjusted for temperature by this sensor here. So there's a couple of fans in here. When this door is closed, when that sensor reaches about mid 30s uh, to upper 30s, it turns on these fans. Heat comes out, stays in the uh, water uh, compartment area, keeps your tanks warm, so that if you're in areas where it's cold, they're not going to freeze. It's all automatic as long as you leave your ITR Oasis burner turned on uh, so that the diesel burner is on and, and burning. Just beside the filter for our whole house filter is our cold and hot low point drains. So if we want to drain all of the water out of the hot and cold drains, we can open these. When we're done, we can close them. So why would we want to do that? If we were going to winterize, we would want to open these up, drain all the water out before we winterize. After we're done, then we'd want to close them to operate normally. Just beside that, we have our auto tank fill. And then right now it's pointing to the auto city supply. I can move it to the city supply if I like or I can move it down to the manual tank fill where I can add as much water as I want. Keep in mind, if I'm manually filling my tank, it might overfill, but it goes out of the tank and you'll see it coming out of the coach at the bottom. So if you're in manual, you have to kind of monitor it visually. It'll come out when it's full. Typically, you would leave it in the city supply or autofill. And you can go over to your, your operator's manual um, and, and decide which one you want. Obviously, if you want the auto tank fill, you leave it in the upper selection. City supply uh, just is to the right. Just below that, you've got your water tap. And if you just needed to um, have a supply for a hose here, you could have extra water supply coming out, open and close. If you look down here, there's a handle. Here, there's a handle here, and these control a gate valve. Okay, these gate valves, this one is the gate valve for this opening. This gate valve is the one for this side. So you've got your main drain valve here and your black drain valve here. So if I'm draining my black tank, I need to open this and then I need to open the main to drain this out. Now there's, that's the way you can drain it through this way but there's also a way that you can get rid of your effluent with this hose, which goes through the macerator, okay? So if I'm using the macerator, all my effluent is gonna come through this flex hose, all right? I should not turn my RV SantaCon macerator on once we connect our sewer to either the small or this large opening and insert it in the receptacle, we want to open up this valve here, which is the opening for this SantaCon hose, and then we want to open up our tank drain valve and then turn the SantaCon on. When we're done, we can rinse and then make sure we turn the SantaCon off 
and then close these two valves. And then we can store our hose back in. When you're finished, you can do a rinse. So if you look up here, you've got gray tank rinse, and then here you've got black tank rinse. So after you've drained all your black tank, you can rinse either one or both. You just insert a hose here. It says open gate valve and turn on RV SantaCon when in use. So once I put my water supply here, I'm going to turn, I'm going to open the gate valve and turn on the RV SantaCon here. That's going to rinse my gray tank. When I'm done, turn it off, remove the hose, cap it, and then I can do my black tank the same way. When I'm finished with those, there's a black tank rinse low point drain. I can open this up and then all of the water that went into rinsing these two connections will drain out. If I open these, it will take the pressure off of these before I take my hose off. And I wanted to make sure to do that if I'm parked in, especially uh, cold, where I, I want to winterize. Uh, when using the SantaCon, make sure the main, main drain valve is closed, open gray and black drain valve. So in other words, uh, this just is reiterating what we said earlier. We don't want to have the SantaCon turned on until our valves are open, meaning gray or black here and here. Okay. If we need to rinse this area, we have our shower rinse here. We can turn our water on cold or warm. We also have a display here. This display shows us where our tank levels are at. Our, that's our home screen. Our water screen shows whether our pump is on or off. We can turn our water pump on or our autofill can be turned on here. Our lights for the security lights on the, either the driver side or passenger side can be turned on. And we can also turn on our generator from all from this screen here. This is our water pump and our water pump screen. If you have the water pump on and it doesn't seem to be pumping much water or none at all, we can remove this manually. And there's a screen here. We can take the screen out here and we can check it and see if it's clean. If it's not, we can clean it, put it back in place and put our screen back on. Yeah. Yeah. And remember that when you put, if you saw that the gasket was left on, but if, if the gasket doesn't come off with the retaining uh, bracket, just make sure that if it falls down, you put it back in, that O-ring has to be there to seal. Just hand tighten, and that keeps your water uh, that's going into the pump clean from any debris. Way in the back, um, it's hard to see, but I can reach it with my hand. There's a low point drain for the fresh tank, but it's way back here. I can drain the low point for the fresh tank, and I would want to do that if I'm going to winterize. Speaking of winterizing, this is the winterizing hose inlet. So whatever I'm going to be winterizing the coach with, this is the hose that picks up that fluid, the antifreeze potable solution, and goes into my coach to winterize all the lines. So I need to remove the plug, insert it into the container, turn the water pump on, and reverse these two valves. If I don't remember that, I can just follow these instructions right here or refer to my owner's manual. We also have a video 
on the Newmar website, but it, it goes step by step how to drain the fresh water tanks, um, remove the whole house filter, uh, close low points, um, insert this into the container of the potable, uh, turn the water pump on, and then you've got to flush the toilets and open all your drains so that the fluid that's coming up here goes into all those drains in the coach, cleans out all the leftover water so that it won't freeze your water lines. When you're finished, you will reverse these back into the place they were, cap this line, and you're done winterizing. There is a notice right below here that says, ensure the shower miser valve is not set to recirculate. We talked about that earlier, but your shower miser valve cannot be set to the recirculate. It, 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 uh, because um, it says here, the valve is not set to recirculate to potable water tank before winterizing. Uh, if you did that, it would just keep pumping the, the antifreeze into uh, the fresh tank. So when I'm done with this hose, we can just store it back here where it was. And when I close the door, the lights will go out. So just in front of the water bay compartment, we've got our ITR Oasis hydronic system. This heats your water and heats the forced air in the coach. As long as you see a green indicator light here that's solid and not flashing, we're in good shape. As long as the bottom one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four lights are not red, we're in good shape. So what you want to see is no red lights here and solid green here. If you see flashing green, that means you have an issue, or if you see red lights, you have an issue. There's also uh, green lights here or red lights here. If you see red lights, uh, you want to refer to your operator's manual. Um, you may have a blown fuse here. Um, if you see lights here that are flashing, you probably have one of these um, labeled as a you know, fuel pump issue, igniter issue, or uh, one of the other issues here. Um, you would need to have this taken to service. Um, you want to make sure that this power light is staying on because your controls inside won't give you hot water or forced warm air if this is off. So if I turn this off, the combustion fan's going to come on and these lights are all going to go out because I've turned it off manually. So this has to be turned on and then I can operate it on and off and cycle it from my inside controls. Uh, this is our power cord reel uh, that is controlled here. Uh, if I need to store my power cord, I can just do that here. This is my intervac. The intervac um, can be turned on and off here manually. I can change my bag, my filter bag here. I can see how much power is coming in to my cord right here. It has a readout how many amps are being used on each line. I can see that here. Just behind that is my transfer switch. The transfer switch has two steady red lights. Do you see those in the back? That means it's turned on and working. Um, if those are flashing, that is an indication of an issue and you refer to your manual on what, what flash code that is uh, for a fault. So steady red is good on those lights back uh, right here on your transfer switch. So we talked about um, scanning for cable channels. So if the park that you're staying at has a cable connection, this is where it's at. Your cable will just plug in here. And then you wanna make sure your over the air uh, antenna is turned off. That way your cable uh, will be fed into your television. Um, in this compartment, there's a plexiglass cover here, and these covers can be removed, um, and you'll see additional fuses here. 
Uh, there are fuses um, for other parts of the coach. There's a battery disconnect here, silver leaf modules. Um, this panel should be left in place um, and only uh, used when it needs to be serviced or you believe you have a fuse that's blown. Um, then these panels should be removed. But you want to leave these in here, especially if you have storage, so that nothing is bumping up against the electrical uh, panel controls. Just to the left of that, we have our inverter compartment. We have Xantrex inverters. Um, these obviously charge your coach uh, battery, and um, they also operate your air conditioner, your roof air conditioner. Um, the green light tells you that you have, air, that you have AC coming in. Um, if there's a fault, uh, the light on the right will flash yellow. And if you see that uh, there is a fault and you can typically clear those faults by pressing clear fault reset button here. So just make sure you're seeing a steady green light here um, on both. If you see the fault light, you can clear the fault here. You can also turn the inverter on or off at this on either one, turning on and off. There are dual fans in the door here. And what these fans do is they pull warm air out of this compartment and pushes it out the bottom of the coach out that way to keep this compartment cool. And they're automatically set to come on at 90 degrees. So you won't see these running because when the door opens, they turn off, but you may put your hand at the bottom here when the door is closed. If it's above 90 degrees inside that compartment, you'll feel air coming out that's warm. And that's coming out from those fans. These are your lithium batteries. Uh, the lithium system um, button to turn on and off that box, which is your BMS or your battery management system, that blue button in the overhead connects or disconnects these batteries through that box. And then it goes into your power bar and then through your coach. So these batteries, uh, they always stay up in the, you know, the high, 12 to 13 volts uh, range. So that's why they go off of a percentage of full because they always stay at that high level. Um, so what you look at is S state of charge, SOC, SOC. As long as your state of charge is above 10, the little blue light in the overhead stays on. If you have to push that to turn it back on, make sure that you turn your generator on or plug your coach in because you're on your last 10% of your battery life in these batteries. You don't want to run those down to zero because then they need to be uh, charged in a special way. If you're questioning the connection or you change one of these or your tech, your dealer changes one and they're not sure how it was plugged in, all those schematics for the wiring are right here on the left hand side. Docking lights, fuel cap fill, just like the other side. Our front compartment has the cockpit fuses and the chassis fuses. Uh, for an example, there's your uh, the heat uh, seat, heated seats, um, fuse and relays here. Um, other items here would be your core, your radio core and things are uh, up in this one. If you see a red light above any fuse, that fuse is blown or it's not making a connection. Take that fuse out, check it. If you need to replace it, we have the spare fuses here. There is a living room uh, label here for the floor heat. This is the lever that you pull um, for the front compartment. And we're gonna show that in just a second. So if I pull this lever, you hear the latch 
release for the hood. And you can see our generators up here, our horn, wiper washer fluid fill. So you need to fill your wiper washer fluid there. Change this every year. This is the filter for your ITR Oasis hydronic furnace. The fluids for the generator, you can see here, this is the coolant fill and then your oil fill level. You can turn the generator on manually here and you'll have power inside as long as this breaker is turned on. See right now that's off. So if I turn my generator on inside or outside, I have to make sure that that breaker is flipped to the on position or up. So if I wanna uh, start my generator here, I can do that, just press and hold, similar to what we did at the dash. And we'll, it'll start and then uh, run it as long as you like. When we're done operating the generator, to turn it off, we just press down here and that turns it off. There is a meter here that tells you how many hours that you can keep track of. And for your service intervals, you can look here and see how many hours you have on your generator. There is a light here you can turn on. This is the um, evaporator condenser box for all your dash heat and dash cool. Those controls and uh, the fan are in here. There is an auxiliary connection here for water and this is hot water it has a valve here that you can drain so if I open that 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 line will drain out there this is the auxiliary fill for that yellow hose that we saw earlier if you need to fill air into tires or inflatables you can plug it in here and as long as your engine uh, had aired up or is is on you'll have plenty of air here to fill those inflatables Moving over here to the far Passenger side is your HWH pump and solenoids those uh, Are they all have a reservoir tank that you can reach down in there's a white cap over the reservoir tank, if I loosen that up, I can pull the cap off and I can see if there's fluid in here up to the full level. So I wanna wipe it clean, insert it, take it out and make sure I have fluid to the full level. Refer to your owner's manual on that because you're gonna to wanna to have your slide rooms extended and your jacks retracted to make sure that you're at the full level. If any one of the jacks for some reason might not retract or the uh, slide rooms, you can actually uh, flip the jack solenoid uh, paddle here and you can push or manually retract those jacks. Um, you can also refer to the owner's manual on that. So your jacks or your slide um, and those types of um, Situations where you need to manually uh, retract, that can be done either here for your jacks or at the sink cylinders underneath for the slide rooms. This is the filter for your um, liquid refrigerant for your compressor and cooling. When you're done in this compartment, just turn off the light and push to close. We talked a little bit about the mobile eye. So when you make your lane changes, uh, this is the eye that views the highway and gives you haptic feedback on your seat and on your dash. It shows uh, lane changes and also tells you uh, if you're uh, close or far from the traffic that's in front of you. You can notice up at the top there, that's your front camera for the 360 degree view. Um, both mirrors, left and right, are adjustable. If you need to make uh, an additional adjustment to the power mirror, uh, let's say you can't quite get enough uh, view left or right, 
you can move this manually left or right or you can move the whole arm just by you can move this part uh, by loosening um, this set screw here adjust it tilt either way then retighten if that's not enough adjustment or you want a different angle of view you can actually remove this plug loosen that um, bolt and then you can move the whole arm then retighten it and reinsert the plug now we'll go inside and we'll show you the exterior or the front lights, bright and dim, and the fog lights. So he's going to go ahead and turn on the lights, uh, marker lights, headlights, and then he'll go bright and dim and turn signal. There's your right or passenger turn, bright lights. left turn and fog lights and that's bright so when you turn your bright lights on your fog lights will go out and again you need to check these before you travel and our lights are all working and he's got his marker lights on now and that's marker flash. You can flash your marker lights with that intermittent switch on your steering wheel. And that's your headlight flash. There's an intermittent button on your steering wheel to flash your headlights. We talked a little bit earlier about um, when the coach is being leveled um, or when to run the slide rooms out. So the order that you want to do that is when you come to the park or where you're going to park your coach, the airbags are all filled with air, okay? So as long as the airbags are full, the slide rooms um, are fit and they're ready to be uh, extended. If you're not on full air, then you don't want to run your rooms out. So make sure you're aired up on both the front and rear air. Then you would run your room out as long as there's enough distance between what we call the Z trim and the fascia trim. That's called the reveal. So this reveal should not be touching on either the back or the front. If you see that your room is touching or almost just about ready to touch, you'd want to make sure that your coach wasn't in too much of an off-level position. As long as you see this distance or gap here and here is about three-eighths of an inch, then it's okay to extend the room. If it's not, then you need to go back in your coach. He's running the room out because we had a good reveal about a 3 8 gap there so you can run your room out now once the room is out we're still on our air ride that's when we would go ahead and level the coach you can see how the room comes out and then it drops down into place this is an HWH hydraulic room so now you would be able to go through the leveling process like we talked about earlier.